everybody and welcome to my tour on the architecture of Spitalfields. I'm Chris and I'm an architect and I'm going to show you around the area. Now if we look just up above me, up there, we can see a Bishop's Mitre and that Bishop's Mitre marks the location of the Bishop's Gate. That's the gateway into the City of London. So if I walk over in this direction, I'm now in the City of London, the old city, and then I walk out here, and I'm in the outside the City of London, heading into the Spittle Fields, which you'll see if we look in that direction, and that's where we're gonna walk up and explore our tour. I'm about halfway now between Bishop's Gate and Spitalfields itself. Um, I've just stopped here because we're on the site of Liverpool Street Station. You can see the sign Liverpool Street up there. But one thing that's quite interesting about this, this site is it was built on top of the old Bethlehem Hospital. And Bethlehem is in fact where we get the word Bedlam from because it was a hospital for mentally ill and bedlam, of course, meaning a chaotic, messy situation. This was the first um, Bethlehem hospital in the medieval period. Okay, we're standing in Spittle Square. Spittle being an abbreviation for hospital because this area dates back to the medieval period and the hospital and priory of St Mary's Spittle. In actual fact, if you look down below my feet, you can see remnants of St Mary's Spittle, both the hospital and the priory below me. Because when they came to develop this area, this being the back end of Spitalfields Market and these modern buildings, they discovered over 8,000 graves that dated back to the medieval period. But not only did they discover medieval graves, but they also discovered Roman graves. Because of course Spitalfields dates back to the Ro Roman period. So we're talking AD 50 onwards, where the Romans used to bury their uh, citizens just outside the city walls, which of course is where we've come to. Okay, we're still on the site of St Mary's Spittle. And what's interesting about the area is not only the layers of history, but also waves of immigration that have taken place in Spitalfields. Um, and the first wave that we're going to talk about here are the Huguenots, who moved to the area in the 17th century. What actually happened is that in the 17th century, there was an event that took place called the revocation of the Edict of Nantes. The Edict of Nantes had allowed Huguenots to worship as Protestants um, freely in France um, and this was revoked in the 17th century by the King Louis XIV and, and, and that led to them fleeing the country and many of them settled here in London in Spitalfields. They were silk weavers and we'll explore um, their silk weaving structures in more detail on another street but you can just look behind me now and see on this street, this is Folgate Street, a typical um, row or terrace of Huguenot houses with its shutters and so on and you can also see the neoclassical features, the stuccoed walls and columns either side of windows and doors and all of that type of thing. Also, what I really like about this street is if you look behind me and upwards, you can see the City of London just looming behind us, trying to encroach into the Spitalfield. So we've almost got two worlds, one taking place at lower level, which is the world of the old Huguenot houses, and then the world of the City of London looming behind us. Okay, just a quick stop here to look at two important structures that we'll analyse in more detail on the tour. Firstly, we've got Spitalfields Market, and secondly, behind me, we've got one of the best views of Christchurch Spitalfields looming down over us, telling us that we'd better behave and conform to the Church of England form of Christianity. It's built as part of the 50 Churches Act um, during the reign of Queen Anne and designed by one of my favourite architects, Nicholas Hawksman.
We've come into the inside of Spitalfield Market. It's a lovely, vibrant space today that dates back to the 1600s when Charles I gave a license for the trading of foul roots and flesh. Um, the market itself today is a Victorian structure and you can see the iron columns uh, and glass roof allowing the daylight to uh, filter through. The market actually was abandoned um, during the 1980s and then as part of the whole regeneration of Spitalfields it's been actually transformed into a kind of like crafts market. Hi everybody, I'm acting rather strangely and rather spookily. Why am I doing that? Well it feels appropriate really because although this sign says historic Spitalfields, we've actually come into the centre of an area known as the Wicked Quarter Mile, which was a weird and spooky kind of area. During the 19th century, Spitalfields went into a, 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 a period of decline, um, this part of the Victorian period, and it became an area of all sorts of den of iniquity type activities. And there was a particular street known as Dorset Street, which was considered to be the worst street in London. And if we look on the map here, Dorset Street was in between Brushfield Street and White's Row. And it was so bad, they've even actually wiped the name off the map, Dorset Street. It was full of prostitution, whorehouses, pubs every second uh, building, razor slashing hoodlums, and a right den of iniquity. And to make matters worse, this area became associated with a series of terrible events that took place in the summer of 1888. And this was the mutilation of a number of women from the area. We're talking about the Canonical Five, murdered by the Leather Apron, or the Whitechapel Murderer, also known, of course, as Jack the Ripper. And one of his murders took place on none other than Dorset Street, and this was the murder and mutilation of Mary Jane Kelly. Hey, we're standing in front of one of my favourite buildings here in uh, Spitalfields, Christ Church Spitalfields, designed by Nicholas Hawksmoor. Hawksmoor was a real Baroque architect, and you can see that in the three-dimensional qualities of his buildings, especially this one behind me. He designed the building almost with three levels. You can see the bottom level with its portico entrance and those grey openings and light and shade. Then there's a quieter neoclassical first floor level and then on top of that Hawksmoor has almost stuck a great um, gothic spire on top of the church. There's an interesting story about Hawksmoor who designed about six churches in and around the city of London. They say that if you draw the lines up between the churches that Hawksmoor designed, where they cross coincide with the murders of Jack the Ripper. And of course, we already seen the site of one of those murders, Mary Jane Kelly, just over there. Action. Okay, the last thing to say about this spot is just across the road, we've got the Ten Bells pub, which is historically interesting because they say that Jack the Ripper may well have drunk in that pub. And if he didn't, a number of his victims certainly did. Okay, we're standing on the intersection between Fournier Street and Wilkes Street over there, and it's a great spot for seeing more examples of Huguenot houses. And you can see the colorful Huguenot terrace of houses behind me. What's interesting here though, is if you look up on the top floor, at the attic floor, you can see the structures there. They're a lighter weight structure built out of timber with lots of glazing. And that is where the Huguenots would have kept their weaving looms. They would have been trying to encourage as much daylight in as possible so they could work for as long hours as possible and really see the different colors that they were working with. Okay, we're standing on Brick Lane, which, believe it or not, takes its name from the manufacture of bricks, which actually dates back to the Elizabethan period. Behind me, we can see the old Truman Brewery, which closed down in the 1980s, but before that, it was the largest brewery in the world. We're also near the corner of Hanbury Street, and if you look down the street, you can see one of the doorways, and that doorway is where one of the murders of Jack the Ripper took place, um, Annie Chapman. If I just turn us round and we look down the street in this direction, 
we can also appreciate the layers of immigration of Spitalfields. And in this case, we're talking about the third layer of immigration, the wave of immigrants from the Bangladeshi community. Hence the reason for all these curry houses. And hopefully we'll go and have a curry later on. Right, we're standing on the corner of Brick Lane and Fournier Street. So we've come to the other end of Fournier Street. And it's an interesting spot because right behind me is a building that encapsulates the different waves of immigration in the area. It started out in the 1700s as a Huguenot chapel um, and then was converted and used as a Jewish synagogue and today you can see that it's actually used as a mosque and you can see the uh, shiny metallic minaret that's been attached to the building. Okay, this spot might not seem like anything much, but it brings back memories for me. When I came to London to work as a young architect, I worked in the practice behind me, MJP or McCormack Jameson Pritchard. I worked on Southwark Underground Station. And every day at six o'clock when we finished work, and particularly on Fridays, we would always come to the pub over here, the Pride of Spitalfields, which is a lovely old East End pub where we would drink pints of ale and eat hot roast potatoes. Okay, we've come pretty much full circle back into the heart of the Wicked Quarter Mile and it seems a good place to start drawing the tour to a close. There's just one or two things I'd like to point out. We're actually on White's Row, which runs parallel to the old Dorset Street that we spoke about earlier. And you can see panning round, Dorset Street is now covered by a trendy uh, residential building there. So someone is living directly over the, one of the murders of Jack the Ripper. Behind us, we've got um, a nice building that actually dates back to uh, the Huguenot period, but it also tells a story of the changing fortunes of Spitalfields. By the 1880s, and at the time of Jack the Ripper, it was being used as a docks house. And according to the 1891 census that I have a copy of here, there are up to 70 people living in this building at, together at any one time, many of them Russian Jews escaping persecution. And then finally, over there, we've got the street sign that says tent to ground. This is an area where sheep's fleeces and other garments would be brought to actually be strung out on hooks, tent to hooks. And this is where the expression I'm on tent to hooks comes from when we're talking about being a bundle of nerves. And finally I've come full circle. Here I am back outside the Ten Bells pub. I'm opposite um, Nicholas Hawksmoor Church. So if you have enjoyed the walking tour in Spitalfields today, be sure to subscribe to my channel where you'll pick up the next one. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.